think of the last time someone asked you to describe yourself in three words? It's the worst interview question ever. How did you answer it? Did you find yourself saying what you want to be or how you want to be perceived rather than how you actually are? Did you say what you thought the question poser might want to hear? Did you say the first three adjectives that came to your head or did you genuinely have no idea how to answer the question? How do you not know how to answer a question that requires no knowledge other than that of yourself? Don't worry, an identity crisis is not uncommon, especially for teenagers. One of the most comforting things to me, though, is knowing that I don't have a deadline to figure myself out. There are plenty of ways for me to get better at knowing myself, and same goes for you. Just like physical fitness or academic achievement, emotional intelligence can be improved upon, it just takes effort in being self-aware. Amy Morin, who gave a TED Talk in 2015 about becoming mentally strong, described three kinds of destructive beliefs. The first, unhealthy beliefs about ourselves, magnifying our own misfortune with thoughts like, why do these things always happen to me? The next, unhealthy beliefs about others, which can stem anywhere from social media jealousy to letting other people bring out the worst in you or blaming other people for your own behaviors, actions. Finally, unhealthy beliefs about the world. This can look like any way that you let society take power from you. It can be considering yourself too small, unimportant, or the opposite. We can all name a narcissist, but not many people are self-aware enough to recognize that quality in themselves. So these are things we want to avoid in our journey towards emotional intelligence, self-awareness, confident self-identity. Great, now how do we do that? It starts with this. Which Hogwarts house are you? Maybe something like this, this, or these, and eventually you'll end up here. The Myers-Briggs Peck Indicator, one of the most popular personality tests in the world. It's used by over 88% of Fortune 500 companies in an effort to place employees where they'll be most successful in the company. Around World War II, Elizabeth, Isabel Myers and her mother, Catherine Briggs, were fascinated with Carl Jung's theory of personality types. They began researching and developing an indicator because as the war waged on, they felt that helping people better understand themselves could lead them to select occupations better suited to them where they could thrive. In the 1940s, the first paper and pencil version of the test was developed, and over the next several decades, it would continue to be fine-tuned. So how does it work? Well, what do Pam Beasley, Captain America, Vin Diesel, Beyonce, and Queen Elizabeth have in common? According to MBTI online approximations, they all have the same personality type. The defenders type ISFJ. Same with Rocket, Madonna, and Eddie Murphy. The entrepreneurs type ESTP. Then there's Dwight Schrute, Judge Judy, and Lyndon B. Johnson. The executives, type ESTJ. And the advocates, Lady Gaga, Martin Luther King Jr., Jon Snow, and me, type INFJ. Now, these letters sound pretty cryptic, so let's break it down. I showed you four, but there are actually 16 personality types total in this test four dichotomies with two options in each. The first, extroversion versus introversion, gives you the E or the I, and it has to do with how you direct and receive energy. It doesn't have to do with social skills. You can have shy extroverts and outgoing introverts. Rather, extroverts want their energy to go out, to bounce off other people and have it come back to them in that way, whereas introverts prefer energy to be fostered in their own heads, thinking and being creative, usually in small groups or by themselves. Then, sensing versus intuition, the S or the N. This has to do with how you gather data and what information you trust most. The sensing type is practical. They like to get down to the here and now, uh, what's happening right now. And the intuitive type prefers deeper meanings, possibilities, um, the big picture. 
Then there's thinking and feeling, you can see here the F, which has to do with how you make your decisions. Thinkers tend to be more logical, whereas feelers take into account how their decisions fit into their value system. And they also put more of an emphasis on how their decisions will affect other people. An interesting distinction between thinkers and feelers has to do with fairness. Thinkers think fairness means treating everyone according to the same standards, whereas feelers think fairness means treating people based on what they need. Individuals have different needs, and so fairness might look a little bit more staggered. Finally, judging versus perceiving has to do with how you interact with the world around you. Judgers like to plan and organize. Perceivers are more go with the flow. These letters were meant to categorize you based on how you interact with the world around you. But remember, these are preferences. Scientists believe you have both within you, you just tend to prefer one over another. Cross your arms for a second. I bet you didn't really think about which arm went over the other, you just prefer it one way. Does that mean you can't flip your arms? No, you could. You could even train yourself to do it one way over another, it would just take practice. Personality types are similar in that they're malleable. Learning about and getting to know your preferences can help you see where you want to make progress, what skills you're maybe lacking in, and in what situations you and your skills would thrive. Your preferences shouldn't be seen as an obstacle or a misfortune if you're lacking in one area over another. It's more of a cheat code. If you stay in your own box, within the walls of your preferences, it's going to be hard to be successful in the real world, as most successful people are able to flex and develop uh, in different skills outside of those, those comfort zones that we hear so much about. About two years ago, I started noticing a pattern that I was struggling with in my social life. Anytime I went out, whether it was a bigger party or a smaller hangout, I was leaving early. Most of my friends were texting their parents, uh, asking to stay later, and I, my parents were texting me back saying, are you sure you just got there, you can stay if you'd like. As much as I felt like I was missing out by wanting to go home, I felt incapable of participating in fun while I was there. I only lasted a couple hours, and then I found myself back home and usually by myself. Now that I know a little bit more about myself, I can identify this as an expression of my introverted personality. My social battery runs out pretty quickly in group dynamics. I tend to get most of my energy when I'm alone. It's just a preference of mine. Now I need to use this understanding as a tool. So before I go out, or before I'm surrounded by a bunch of people for a long period of time, maybe I need to spend time by myself, doing something relaxing. It's a super simple fix and a super simple scenario, but it's helped me become more mentally strong because I stopped blaming myself, others, and the world around me for my behaviors. And I approached what I previously would have considered a flaw as in a, in a more non-judgmental way. It helped me see my personality trait as a preference rather than a misfortune that I had no control over. So even though my preference is for intuition, I need to be practical at times. Even though my preference is for feeling, I need to be able to make logical decisions. And even though my preference is judging, I need to be able to go with the flow. If you're interested in learning more about your personality type, I encourage you to check out the website 16 Personalities. Uh, it's just a, an approximation of the Myers-Briggs type indicator, as the real test is a proctored exam. Um, but there's a ton of information about what your results mean and, and how it can help you out if you're interested. Um, thank you for listening. That's all. <laughs>